Good morning to everyone. We are happy to be with you this morning for this webinar dedicated to European startups who plan to expand in Paris region and France. This webinar is organized by Grand Anton and Choose Paris region. I'm Majid Urzik, Investment Project Manager at Choose Paris region on legal and tax services. So, what is Choose Paris region or in another word, who we are? Choose Paris Region is a Paris Region agency dedicated to attractiveness. It's a business and innovation catalyst supporting international companies with their development in Paris Region. With its team of approximately 80 people in France, the USA and China, Choose Paris Region supports help more than a thousand foreign companies every year. What are our services? Choose Paris Region organizes events dedicated to foreign investors like industry events, workshops, webinars, learning expeditions, or open innovation tech meetings. Choose Paris Region can connect you with actors who can facilitate your development and your business with the French market. Choose Paris Region can connect you with the right people when you apply for grants or your access to financing or tech partners. On the operational side of setting up your business, we can connect you with our partners. For example, for the legal aspect, we can introduce you with our networks of law firms like Grand Thornton. To open a bank account, we can connect you with one of our bank partners. If you plan to recruit people, we can introduce you to an HR agency. If you are looking for offices, workspaces, we can introduce you to real estate brokers, co-working centers, business centers, or incubators. For your personal aspect and anything dealing with relocation and visa, we work with a network of relocation agencies. Anis Caramodino, Global Mobility Manager at Choose Paris Region, will tell you more about it during her presentation. As we many have startups today, Choose Paris Region works closely with the R&D ecosystem of Paris Region, which includes labs, clusters, financing, industry events. We can obviously introduce you to this R&D ecosystem. So, concerning today's program, to start, Pierre Baceras is going to introduce you the Paris Region value proposition for startups. Then, Marc Quinn, Jérôme Sinelnikov and Thibault Grange are going to introduce you the legal aspect to set up your business in France and the incentives you can benefit. At the end, Anis Karamodino will talk about some tips for a smooth transition when you come to Paris. To finish, we will have a 10-15 minutes of questions and answers. You can obviously ask your questions during the webinar and we are going to try to answer them at the end. If we have a lot of questions and we can't answer to all of them, we are going to send you the answers by email. Thank you very much. Pierre Baceras, I like to start with the value proposition for startups. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Majid. Uh, thanks everyone for being here this morning. So why Paris region? Why would you want to set up your business in Paris region? Well, Paris region is one of the most attractive regions in Europe. It is one of Europe's most dynamic and innovative e ecosystem for startups. Paris region has a GDP that is the first in Europe, it's number five in the world. It's equivalent to the one of the Netherlands as a whole. Uh, we, in Paris region, there are 12 million inhabitants, France 67. The region is well connected to major airports and easily accessible from any European city. It is a central place in Western Europe to do business. It gives you access to 500 million European customers. It concentrates more Fortune 500 companies than anywhere else in Europe. It is the third concentration in the world after Tokyo and Beijing. Here are a few examples of large corporations which are also global leaders in various sectors, financial services, deep tech, smart mobility, aerospace, healthcare and life sciences, film, logistics. These could be your customers thanks to many open innovation activities. 
The region is number one startup region in Europe. It has a high concentration of innovation centers, incubators, accelerators, public or private. It has a very large inventory of business, real estate, co-working spaces, also very interesting in terms of rental cost. This red rooster represents the French startup ecosystem, also known as French tech, an initiative supported by the French government. Today, Paris region hosts more than 8,000 startups. Here is a picture of Station F that has been founded three years ago. And it actually an old train station that's been renovated. It's considered as the biggest startup campus in the world, as it can host a thousand startups in various accelerations programs. Here are a few examples of startups, scale ups, and a few unicorns. And just a, as a matter of fact, very recently, Sparing Vision a biotech company from Paris region has just raid, raised 44 million euros. It's the second round above 40 million euros of the year. This fundraising was multinational and it shows uh, France's resilient attractiveness and our vibrant life science scene. There is a wide choice of incubators and accelerating programs covering all sectors within Paris and also outside in the seven districts around Paris. Here are a few examples. The region also offers an organized ecosystem thanks to eight innovation and technology clusters. These clusters bring together big corporations, laboratories, research centers, SMEs, businesses. For example, in the southwest of the region, there's this Paris-Saclay cluster in engineering, mobility, ICTs. It's a world-renowned center for scientific research. Now, Paris region also offers a huge talent pool for tech companies. It is renowned for its world-class universities and academic institutions. The region has the highest R&D budget in Europe, totaling more than 20 billion euros, 1,200 1,200 R&D labs. What you see here is a view of Paris-Saclay area. It's a deep tech cluster that represents 15% of the whole French R&D. You recognize the EDF Research Center, and in the back, Danone, um, Thales, the Institute of Optics Graduate School, and further away, Ecole Polytechnique. Uh, Paris region is the number one region in Europe also for the number of PhD students. More than al almost one third of them are international. And these are examples of big corporations that decided to invest in R&D in Paris region and particularly in artificial intelligence. The region concentrates 40% of French R&D expenditures in artificial intelligence. Now, what makes Paris region so special to set up a business is that it is also a flexible and competitive workplace. We've seen, we've got highly specialized, technically complex expertise, but labor productivity is also high. It's number five in Europe and setting up in such a place can mitigate the issue of rising labor costs. To encourage companies to do R&D activities, France has a very ambitious program called CIR, Crédit d'Impôt Recherche. It offers the most generous R&D tax credits treatment 
30% of R&D expenditures is tax deductible. There's also a program, very strong incentives for young companies, startups called GE, JEI, Jeune Entreprise Innovante. And I just want to mention on a regional level, we also have incentives to encourage certain kind of activities. It all depends on your projects. Finally, I'm going to talk very quickly about our services. Uh, Majid mentioned earlier, we offer a wide range of services. These are free, confidential and tailor-made. For example, if you need to um, have a better idea of the size of your market, we can provide you with data, help you meet key players to get business opportunities through partnerships, events, seminars. Because we have extensive knowledge of the ecosystem, we can connect you with clusters, incubators, especially international incubators label, labeled by Paris region that offer a wide range of services to international startups. And these services we will be happy to offer you. This concludes my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. I will now give the floor back to Majid. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre, for your presentation. As you can see, there are a lot of reasons for a startup to set up in Paris region. I just wanted to tell you to not forget to ask your question on the question form at the right of your screen. Now, Jérôme Sinelnikov, Thibault Grange, and Marc Huyn from Grand Thornton are going to introduce us the legal aspect to set up a business in the Paris region and the incentives you can benefit. And thank you, Majid, for this brief intro. So, before kicking off the discussion, I think it's uh, pretty interesting to have the vision of uh, consulting and service firms such as Grant Thornton regarding the business attraction and business activity that we've seen uh, in the past month or so. So um, basically what we've seen is that um, despite the actual situation related to COVID, uh, there's still a strength for international companies to do business in France. Um, we see a lot of tech companies, service companies that uh, decided to move forward with their projects. And we can see this type of companies from almost all around the world. Um, and we can assist them from the lending of the face in their own land. Um, based on our international network. So as you can see on that slide, we have a full presence in more than uh, 130 countries in the world. And from that international footprint, we're able to support these international companies when they're coming inbound in France and also from their homeland outbound and supporting them on their international growth. Um, so we have a full, um, we have a full um, uh, possibility to support you on many aspects that relates to um, legal tax, accounting and um, planning and so on and so forth. If we're now uh, drilling more regarding the French uh, side of the fence. So the way it works is that we are able to support international companies from almost every locations in France um, based on our global uh, footprint. So we have 23 offices all across the country and we are more than 2000 people um, ready to support you on all aspects that um, that we can help you with. So there's a range of services for sure, but uh, just to let you know globally, so we'll be focusing 
on the legal and tax, which is key and essential, including the planning for sure, the accounting. Uh, we can support you also for financial advisory services that includes the due diligence, the PPA purchase price allocation services, and so on. Uh, of course, the operational advisory when you're going to grow and you're going to need some support for uh, structuring your business on the uh, procurement side, on the IT side. And last but not least, also we can assist you for many aspects such as IPO readiness, um, audit, and things like that. And I'll pass uh, now the description to my colleague, Mark. Your, your mic, your microphone is off. Yeah, your turn. Yeah, uh, unmute, please, Mark. Okay, let's go. Hello, everyone. I I guess you can hear me now. So let's jump to the legal environment in France. So, uh, as you may know, as in you have a different type of uh, corporate structure from the lesser engaging that you have some. The less restrictive would be the, the liaison office. So just to make some marketing issue to just sound the market. And after that, you have the branch. Then the more more complex would be uh, set up a subsidiary. I would I would go deeper on the subsidiary because in France we have a very uh, different type of structure entity in France. And we have from the most complex to the most easiest. And I want to focus today on the French SIS, which would be the simplified joint stock company. This is typically basically a contract based company that allows you to to do to do to have the governance that you want. The only requirement for this type of company and which is the most used in corporate in France would be to have a legal representative. And that's all. After that, you can implement uh, the governments that you want. You can have some board committees. Uh, you can even duplicate your the structure of governments that your home country has or that you have set up in within your, your group. So this is a really large, uh, very easy form of company and very flexible. It's contract based. Um, and the type of share you have also a really flexibility. You can have preferential shares and so on. Um, on another thing that France has uh, improved a lot, and today is one of the best in the world, is would be would be for the incorporation process. Today we have a one-stop shop for the incorporation process. So basically, we just fill up the documents and what what for Paris region, it's uh, at least for within 48 hours you will have an incorporation number. And the one stop shop means that you have to fill at the CFO, which is the center with the formality center for the companies. And then this entity, this public entity will, will transfer your, your incorporation to the different administration. So like was the tax administration, the employment administration for you. So it's really easy. You don't have to run through all the administration in France. Uh, for incorporation, you just drop the files at one point and voila. Um, I would also say, also to say that a lot of questions ask for foreign companies about the constraint on the director or residency require permanent uh, uh, resident card. That's none of this in France. What you have in France that um, an individual or corporate can be president or shareholders. We have no nationality requirement. So on that part also, it's very flexible. Okay, so now I will move on to the to the employment labor law environment. That would be the expect that uh, a lot of people have some preconceived idea of the French um, system, which I would say today, uh, since with the new president, we have a very simplified um, situation. But today, for the and one of the biggest point that people heard was uh, the dismissal. And today in France, we have two severance pay scale that uh, that 
scale deep storage economic to company size and employee length of service. So basically, if you go through the dismissal, you know where you exactly where you're going to financially speaking. On the process, also today we have a standard dismissal letter template provided by the government. Also, the procedural error that used to be played by the employees are no longer uh, at stake today because of this, all these type of securities uh, to avoid any confusion or uncertainty into the French dismissal process. Um, also, on the on the unions in France, that uh, today we have a very simplified unions. We used to have different type of uh, representative body. Today, we have only one single uh, employee representative body, would be the Social Income Council. So it's a lot of things that simplify the social dialogue, like, like we say, in France. And I want to just put one thing in France that uh, this is the rate of union membership that is very, very low in France compared to other countries, which for 2018 and 19 was on 8.4%. So it's very far from what people can think or imagine in France um, on, the, on the labor aspect. And last point, which, which is uh, specific to European country and especially in France, is the strong social protection, the social security system. That I want to say it benefits both for employees and employer. For employees, obviously you have inside the, the retirement fund, uh, workplace accident fund, family, sickness. Um, this all been covered by the social security system in France. So one example that's it's win-win situation that benefit both to the employees and to the employer. It's like, if you have typical things would be sickness. So for sickness, the French social security covers 60% of the employee's reference salary from the fourth day. And the employer only pays the difference up to maximum 90%. So you see you have at least half of this paid by the French government through the social security system. Other big things, it's the maternity leave. Maternity leave are fully supported and covered by, by the French social security system. So the employees is paid through the social security system. Sometimes it can be paid by the employer, but in that case, the social security system pay to the employer that he pays back to the employee. So you see that we have a very friendly environment for the, for the legal aspect, very easy corporate incorporation, uh, in employment law, very smooth uh, social discussion with the employee, social dialogue, like we say in France, and a strong social security system to support your ongoing and daily relation with your employees. Thank you very much. So on the next step, I will give, I will talk, what we talked about the tax environment with uh, Thibault. Thank you, Mark. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, Thibaut Gange, I'm a tax lawyer in Grand Thornton uh, Paris office. Uh, I will start by explaining the main principle of taxation in France. So the, the first thing to know is that the French applies the principle of territoriality to taxation, meaning that French and foreign companies are only taxed on the earning generated in France. Therefore, profit made by companies operated abroad are not taxable in France. So if you are making business in France, you can operate from a subsidiary, uh, which is an entirely separate legal entity located in France, or from a branch office, which is a permanent establishment set up by a foreign company. It's not a legal, a separate legal entity, but for tax purposes, it will be considered to be an independent taxpayer in France. So both subsidiary and branch will be subject to the same tax and including corporate income tax. So in France, the corporate income tax uh, uh, rate, sorry, the corporate income tax is currently 28%, but it will be decreased to 25% by 2022. And it should be noted that a register rate of 15% applies to certain small and medium entities 
on a part of their earning, meaning that, for example, if you have a taxable income of 100,000 euro, your CIT liability will only correspond to 21% of your profit, um, which makes France one of the lowest tax rates for EU member states. As a comparison, German CIT rate is around 30%. In Italy, it, you're around 28%, and in Spain, 25%. Um, one of the other advantage of the French tax regime is that during the beginning of your activity, if you are really realizing loss, uh, these loss can be carried forward indefinitely and of, offset against your future, your future tax profit. Moreover, to ensure that the same income is not taxed both in French and in your own country, French has signed um, a lot of tax treaties with more than 120 countries, meaning that your own country should be one of them and that most of the country where you would like to do business will also be included. Um, moreover, as Pierre mentioned, the French tax system uh, is uh, focused on innovation and investment. The fifth incentive concerns the research and development tax credits and the innovation tax credits. The businesses that spend money on research may be granted a tax credit, which, which can be offset against your corporate income tax liability. So scientific and technical research eligible includes fundamental and applied research as well as experimental development. The, um, the expense that are eligible for tax credit includes uh, depreciation of fixed asset, personal expenditure, of course, of the researcher and the research technician, and also research expenditures subcontracted to public research bodies and private research organizations approved by the French Ministry for Research. So as Pierre said, uh, the tax credit rate for R&D expenditure is 30%. Moreover, since 2013, the research tax credit has been extended to cover certain innovation investment by small and medium entities. So this has to do with operation to design prototypes for new products not yet on the market or which have superior features. Um, the tax credit rate for innovation is 20% for the eligible expenses up to a maximum of 400,000 euro per year. Um, moreover, new businesses that invest in R&D and that have innovative startup status, which was uh, mentioned by Pierre, it's JEI. Um, they, are also, they are also eligible for exemption from tax and social security contribution. To have the innovat innovative startup status, your business must have to meet the following condition. You must be a small and medium entities. You must be independent, meaning that um, you must be, the French company must be owned by a minimum of 50% by individuals or by certain firms in venture capital sector. And your yearly investment for research must represent at least 15% of the tax deductible expenses. So new business with innovative, innovative sorry, startup status are entitled to exemption from personal income tax of course, corporate income tax, some of local taxes, and from social security contribution. Of course, this exemption can be combined with the R&D tax credit and the innovative tax credit. And you can also receive, receive an immediate refund for these two tax credits. Finally, uh, we have a special impatriate tax regime, which applies to individuals. So the impatriate regime in France provides entitle, entitlement to income tax exemption on additional compensation, like your expatriate bonus, 50% uh, of exemption on your income from investment from foreign sources, also on certain intellectual and industrial property rights from foreign sources, 
and also on capital gain on the chain of securities from foreign sources. So the expatriate scheme also allows beneficiary to deduct contribution to supplementary retirement, supplementary pension scheme, which with which they were affiliated before arriving in France from their taxable income. So as a conclusion, being an impatriate in France can allow you to pay less tax than in your home country as a kind of welcome bonus. So before leaving the, the talk to, uh, to Jerome, I would say that with all of these, these incentives, the low CIT rate of less than 25% for new business, the R&D tax credits, the innovation tax credits, the innovative startup status and the impatriate regime, French has become a favorable, a favorable tax environment for startup like yours. And Jérôme. Okay, and thank you very much, Thibault, for this presentation. Uh, thank I you. Think, you know, yeah, we have a better understanding of all these incentives that uh, France is offering right now. So as we're um, uh, moving forward in this presentation, so I would like to touch base uh, rapidly regarding the counting requirements, uh, just to make things pretty straightforward regarding that. So there's no definitely requirements for um, international companies to have the physical uh, bookkeeping in France. This can be easily managed remotely, uh, but they have to follow some local requirements that are actually pretty straightforward. Uh, so we are using a dedicated chart of account, and uh, this is something that the uh, French uh, government has set up a long time ago, which entitles to have for every companies in every businesses the same visions regarding the revenue expenses and balance sheet, um, but also there's some uh, documentation and we can assist support regarding the uh, translation from English to French regarding that aspect. Um, regarding the uh, bookkeeping, so basically uh, the only requirement is that if there is a tax audit, you have to uh, propose to the tax auditor the description of the bookkeeping in French. Um, so this is kind of the um, actual legislations uh, regarding the tax aspects. Uh, so you can do that easily in both languages, English and French, but in case of an audit, you need to keep in touch having the French version available. Um, also, um, the way the accounting needs to be structured is that it has to um, ties with uh, mandatory fields. That's what we call the AEF for accounting entry files. And these are pretty standards, but that includes actually the uh, file, file the the file re related to the chart of account uh, the French chart of account mm. but except of that it's, it's pretty basic in terms of description and terms of debit credit um, nothing um, very original on that um, and when you'll uh, be preparing your financial statements uh, first of all it will depend on the um, type of companies. Because for instance, for a legal entity, yes, you'll have to prepare the financial statements, but um, if you want to set up a subsidiary, for instance, there's no requirements to have financial set up statements in France. So you just need to prepare the tax return, the corporate income tax return, and that makes things uh, smoother. So that's an option uh, when you want to start uh, an opening a new business in France. And also, regarding these financials, uh, even if you decide to set up a legal entity such as a sub, well, it's not because you have a sub that it's mandatory to have an audit. So audit, um, uh, what triggers an audit is a couple of uh, threshold that you need to pass that relates to turnover, total asset, and number of employees. And only if you hit two of these thresholds, in that case, you'll uh, entitled to have a local audit. So just rapidly to summarize, so um, 
you can handle your accounting remotely. We can support you with the French specific rules. Uh, everything can be done smoothly. There's just when we have a tax audit that we need to be prepared and have these uh, bookkeeping in French available and also an AEF file. Um, so I'll pass now the presentation back to Majid. Thank you very much, Thibault, Jérôme, and Marc. As you mentioned uh, in your presentation, different solutions are available for a foreign startup to set up in France. I just wanted to say to the participants to not uh, hesitate to ask questions on the question form at the right of your screen. Now, Annie is going to introduce you some tips for a smooth transition. When you come to Paris, Annie, I give you the word. Thank you, Majid, and good morning, everyone. Uh, if you're thinking of moving to France, there are a few important things that you need to bear in mind or to prepare in advance in order to make it a, a successful journey. So I would like to share with you five tips for a smoother relocation. The first advice is about the legal aspects before moving to France. As you know, uh, European Union citizens do not require a visa to work in France, but non-European Union nationals intending to invest, work and stay in France need to have a work permit and an appropriate visa. And this process has to start before moving to France. In this case, or if you have non-European employees, we will join your future office in Paris. There is, for example, an attractive residence permit for foreign talent called Passport Talent in French. And this talent passport allows you and your family to live and work in France for up to four years renewable. So to know more about the eligibility criteria or simply to get information on, on your personal path, you can have a look at the Welcome to France website. I'm uh, going to send you the link right now. So this website helps you understand the main procedures you need to go through before you locate to France. The second advice is about considering getting a relocation expert. Because we know that moving to a new country or city can often be stressful. So considering getting help from local relocation experts can be valuable and help you save a lot of time and effort and quickly feel at home. So you will find in Paris region a large network of multilingual service providers dedicated to supporting expatriate families or companies hosting foreign employees. For example, helping with immigration formalities, looking for accommodation or a guarantor, opening a bank account, uh, learning more about cultural differences, helping the spouse find a job and so on. So if you need help, we will be happy to connect you with partners that can assist you before and during your stay in France. The third advice is about schooling. If you're in the process of planning a move to France with kids and would like someone to speak to, feel free to contact us. We would be happy to help as well. Um, for your information, the Paris Region School offer satisfies both bilingual children, young children whose parents plan to stay in France on the long-term basis, and expatriates on the move wanting the same schooling for their children in France and abroad. You will find in Paris region, lots of schools offering bilingual programs, lots of international private schools with a variety of curriculum and diplomas, international baccalaureate, European baccalaureate, A-levels, Montessori schools, and so on. If you want to know more, uh, again, uh, let me share with you our website dedicated to international schooling in Paris region.
here is the link. Uh, and to go further, do not hesitate to contact me. I will be happy to help. The fourth advice is about learning the language. If you're planning on spending any time in France, learning some French is a good idea. If you don't speak any French yet, don't be afraid. You don't need to be completely fluent. But if you make an effort, it will always be appreciated and everything you learn will make your time in France easier, will help discover the French culture and integrate with local people. So to help you in the process, you can opt for French language classes uh, or use mobile apps such as Duolingo, not to mention podcasts and YouTube channels. And if you prefer watching movies, everyone knows Netflix, obviously. So I would suggest the French international TV channel called TV5 Monde Plus, uh, offering many programs in French, subtitled in English, Spanish, and so on. And last but not least, uh, let me share with you again uh, a MOOC for learning French with online classes open to uh, anyone and free of charge. I'm going to send you the link right now. Okay, so here is the link and don't miss this opportunity. And the last tips is about joining local expats community. Uh, Paris Sudan is an international hub where people from all over the world live, study, work and visit. And by setting up in Paris, expats entrepreneurs will join many companies operating on a global scale and a large community of English speaking people. So you will be able to find support, advice and tips about daily life in Paris region, but also opportunities to meet new people or develop new business contacts. And if you want to familiarize yourself with French culture or know more about how doing business with French people, for example, perhaps there is a community of French expatriates around you to discuss and share a few tips. That is for me. I hope this advice will help you fully live your experience in Paris region if you decide to move here. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Annie, for your uh, presentation. Uh, I would uh, say now it's the time for question and answer. Uh, I, we just received a question, which is the following one. I just have an innovative ID and no company yet. I'm in the process of setting up a company in Berlin as I'm based here. Can I still move to Paris and set up a new business? If yes, I would like to know more about R&D incubators program in Paris. Best regards. Uh, so um, basically having a European entity set up is allowing you to operate in Europe, okay? And from that company, uh, even if it's based in Berlin, you can have activities in France, okay? Um, so now the questions relates more to the R&D credit, okay? So as you're gonna uh, move forward and try to benefit from these R&D incubators, there's a question about with which legal entity you wanna benefit from that one, okay? And in that case, you'll have to have a legal entity in France because you can't operate and having an R&D's um, benefits, French, French benefits, if you're not operating from a French entity. So uh, the way you can manage that is by creating a sub or a, a, sub, a subsidiary or uh, by uh, setting up a, a branch. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, uh, for your participation to this uh, webinar. I wanted to thank you uh, also, also our partners from Grand Thornton, Jerome, Marc and Thibault for your participation today. So we will obviously send you the presentation uh, in the next days. 
We wish you a nice day and we hope to see you again in the next webinar or event. Thank you very much.